looking for something. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Light on Living. I'm your host. Well, I created a show, Lisa Berry. Today we are continuing this beautiful series that we have. We're working on this book, which is Magnetic Entrepreneur, but this is for women leadership. And wow, these women are leading. They're leading in ways that you just, it's endless, the stories and the life, like lifetimes that people can live even, you know, by the time they're 12, 10, 8. It's just, uh, you know, a, a a honor to be able to read these stories, but even more so to share it. Today we have oh, just this sweetheart of an angel kind of woman floating around, but yet so anchored. <laughs> I'm going to announce her as Rhonda Lauer. And am I saying that right? I just want to make sure. You have it beautifully, Rhonda Lauer. Wow, it's like flower, and you love flowers. <laughs> well, everyone... As I introduce Rhonda, I want to say one important thing, and then I'm going to let Rhonda comment on this. Rhonda, you are actually one of the co-authors who I'm going to say takes a leadership role in the in the actual book. And I, the reason why I say this is because you love helping to attract, like you are a magnetic entrepreneur, to attract people, not just women, who need to write their stories for either healing or for sharing. It, is that do you feel like you've taken on that that role too? Absolutely, Lisa. And thank you for saying Rhonda Lauer rhymes with flower because I used to get called flower power when I was in <laughs> elementary school. And it was it was one of the most fun things. I I always wore that like a badge of honor, flower power. <laughs> it's, it's quite a controversy, right? It's it's so opposite of one another. Yeah, but yeah, 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 to answer your uh, question, yeah, I feel definitely like I've taken on a leadership role within the community of uh, the magnetic entrepreneur and attracting individuals into writing their stories. You know, we have these stories that are trapped inside of us, and quite often I find that people are... They, number one, they have limited beliefs about themselves that nobody's interested in hearing their story. And to be totally honest with you and quite frank, that's hogwash. Because, <laughs> because you know, there are nuggets within everybody's story, life story, or a story of a particular event that can help other people get unstuck. And I think that's where my life has really grown, Lisa, is that I am loving on helping people get unstuck. Yeah, you can feel it in that way. And and this again, and I this is this is kind of the we're paying a little bit of homage to the the anthology style, but I'm so glad because you're the perfect person to do this with. What yeah. happens when you do have an anthology or compilation of authors all coming together in one spot? Do you know that I feel like and maybe you do too, that almost every one of the co authors, I feel like they they feel safe, more safe, that they can actually go a little deeper and, and have a little bit more healing and then reach a little more people because of the support from all the other co-authors do you find that oh yeah actually that's a really really awesome point lisa you know i feel like it's a community that has developed and there's there's a, a vulnerability that has developed because people feel like their story is trusted like it's coming from a trusted source uh we get to know each other's personality uh and we all have different personality types but because you've developed this trusting uh community community of individuals we're all there to actually help support each other grow through this process of writing and it's so organic like it's so gosh it just feels so right I love that you just said that growth through the process of writing. I actually am writing. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> so am I. So am I. 
<laughs> yeah, everyone. Well, just to let you know, so as we speak with Rhonda Lauer, we uh, she has a chapter, of course, in this book, but she has a, a chapter in, a, in a, the other books as well, in the upcoming books. And this is my big, big point. If you are listening and you're like, oh, that does sound safe, and I want a community. Maybe you didn't have such a great supportive family life growing up, and you'd like a new family, or, you know, or you just mm-hmm. want to share your story to heal, then I would love for you to reach out to Rhonda, because I know that, Rhonda, you are um, just chatting with people, letting them know how the process goes, and if they do want to be a part of any upcoming book or maybe one that they want to even compile who knows right (laughs) yeah absolutely absolutely lisa i would love to be able to help people grow through the process Okay, so with that, let me just share with everybody your your little bio here, and then okay. we'll, and we can just it's actually we're not even changing subjects. We're going to continue because this is all about helping people. <laughs> yeah. So everyone, meet Rhonda. Rhonda Lauer is truly a female warrior. <laughs> her journey in life has been tumultuous to say the least. Yet her determination and grit to be all that she can be has launched her into another fabulous entrepreneurial adventure, one that truly resonates with her soul. She is supporting and encouraging others in her coaching business in order to help them gain the wisdom and momentum to create true inner happiness and peace. I love the word momentum. Uh, she, she loves pointing her clients towards abundant living and helps them to get out of their heads and maintain a level of resilience that is unmatched to that of their past. She is a certified coach and runs her business as an enthusiastic, yay, and charismatic leader in the (laughs) healthy, wealthy, and wise corporation. I will say that. And would love to connect with you to help fulfill your dreams. She is a magnetic entrepreneur, and you will find her on Facebook. She's super easy. She's always there. I love her. And she says to you right now, your clock is ticking, so come on. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) I'm reading your thing. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, you know what, Lisa? When I say that your clock is ticking, one of the things that uh, I have learned through being part of the Healthy Wealthy Life Coaching Program is that something that Benjamin Franklin had shared, and we pride ourselves on this statement, and I'm not saying it word for word, so forgive me for that, but it generally goes like this. Most people die at the age of 25 with their dreams still inside of them and then don't get buried until they're 75. And you know what that means? That means they're rotting in between. Yeah, there's a lot of years in between where they are just not feeling fulfilled and they're afraid to live their dreams out or they don't even have dreams. And I lived that kind of life for a very long time. Uh, that, okay, perfect way to start because the, how I want to start with you, and um, this we're kind of dedicated this entire um, episode, this segment to things about, you know, competition, but not just about winning. And the reason why is because when we're children, I want to take you back to your childhood because I felt like when I was reading your chapter that you expressed for what I think a lot of us feel, which is that carefreeness of playing and competing, which is just like fun and harmless when you're so little. And then boom, everything changes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, I grew up being a very athletic young girl. I mean, I was a rural girl growing up, and I still love living in a rural community. Uh, sports were exciting to me. I loved being a team player. Uh, but I found that as I was going through the growing process of uh, playing baseball, for example, I loved being a cheerleader for the opposition. Like, what a weird thing to say. <laughs> but I would be on first base or third base or home plate playing the best game that I could possibly play for me. And I would congratulate people as they got into their home run or, you know, or, or if they got onto second base, I'd be like, great hit, you know. And, of course, I'd say that to my own team players as yeah. well. I found what was really important to me during that playing process was that I wanted to be better than the last hit I, mm-hmm. that I did, not that what somebody else did. I didn't want to compare myself to how somebody else played. I always wanted to improve my own skill. And uh, that, that, I think, is what has generally created that warrior sort of feeling within me. Mm. Although I've got this soft little squishy heart, <laughs> I, uh, I feel like a, a warrior woman. I want to go out there and just play my best game today, whatever that game happens to be. Mm. And if we could still look at life, like it was a game, just for us, like a fun game, like something, you know, it doesn't just end, you know, because things happen and 
you know, it's such a it's such a transition to be able to for some reason, yes, you were like able to see everyone shine, and there was no team, there's no opposing team. It was all collaborative. It was yeah, all cooperation. And, and did you and you never let that get to you though, even with some of the your. I'm gonna highlight that for you when I was reading your chapter, I felt like, gosh, this poor girl, like, you know, it just, it's, it seemed like one challenge after the other. You just get up that little hill and then you're like, oh no, another one. It's even bigger next time. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely right. I mean, one challenge after another, but I don't know, I, you know, Lisa, I don't know if it's partly that nature of resilience. Um, and over the years, what I've learned is my stories aren't about who I am, but they've actually helped to mold who I am. Mm. So I'm not my story, but I'm a collection of my stories. And I'm like that potter's clay. And, you know, on any given day, you add a little more water, you add a little more spin to the wheel. And mm. uh, I can take another form. You know, I, I, I just love that. I just love that every day is a brand new day and there's a new there's a new degree of creation to who Rhonda Lauer is. That is, I'm imagining a piece of, like, you know, a clay that is a little bit dry now and, and you know, it's a dry spell, they'd say, but then you, like you said, yeah. add a little water and then momentum, because that's the spinning, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I do want to go into momentum, but I've got a question about dreams, because you kind of just made me think of this. He said sometimes people aren't living their dreams or they're locked inside, but sometimes they just don't even have any. Yeah. And, do you, uh, this is such a big one. Now I'm hitting this up. Well, as we have experiences happen, good or bad, like you can, you know, traumatizing or you know, celebratory. Um, can the, can our dreams do they change with our experience? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, I have been through a lot of tough times, Lisa, and I'll, I'll use a, a prime example. My husband had gotten really ill from 2012 to. Currently, I dug into life, but I wasn't present, you know, uh, for a long time. I am now. I wasn't present for such a long time because I got into the habit of being busy and not being present and not necessarily being productive. Mind you, I get a lot done, but being in that habit of busyness allowed my dreams to disappear. I wasn't tapping into my own personal dreams or endeavors because I was too busy getting on with the next challenge or the next the next yeah. job that I had. You know, living on purpose and having that time to separate yourself from the world as we know it and get into a place of solitude allows you to become more grounded. And what I have found is as I've learned to become more grounded, my dreams and visions for my future have shone in the right. You know, as you talk about light on uh, living. Little living. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's what it's done for me. It's opened up the opportunity for me to begin, begin dreaming again. I was told at one time that I was a dreamer, but it was used as a negative connotation. Yes. So I, I into my 20s and 30s, that's the way I felt people would say, you're such a, you know, you're such a dreamer and Oh, get real or get a life Mm -hmm. or, or you're wearing such rose colored glasses and people actually get angry at me for that. But that childlike spirit in me has always been sort of, I don't want to say festering because that's like a negative Mm -hmm. connotation, but that childlike spirit has always been somewhat effervescent in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was not until within the past couple of years of me taking that time to really rediscover who I was and what my intention was in life that I was able to start dreaming again and really living life. I'm going to ask you some some of those things that you did do to take that time to do it, but I, I love that you said busy versus present because when we're busy, it, it just sounds tiring. It's a lot of effort, but when we say present, it sounds effortless and with flow and ease, like so much easier, right? Yeah, yeah, it's so and, true. And so that is the question. So right now, if somebody's listening, they're like, oh, yeah, I just got so busy. And you know what a lot of people, and when somebody hears, you know what, you're 
you're just a dreamer. Basically, what they're saying is you can't achieve it. You can't do this. You can't win. You can't. So, what are some of those tips if you could tell someone listening that says, "Yeah, I'm identifying. How do I get to know myself? How do I remember what my dreams are or even create new ones? Where do you start?" <laughs> Yeah, that's a really great question. (laughs) You know, first of all, I want to say, looking back at my own kaleidoscope in life, Hmm. I want to say that when people would share a negative connotation or a negative perception, what I needed to learn to do, and this has been quite a lifelong process, is to recognize that it's their perception. That's Their perception Mm -hmm. is based on their own stories in life. And although I might wear these wonderful rose-colored glasses, I'm living that life, you know. Mm-hmm. I I wear the lens for my own life, and I've, I've taken back the ownership of that and stopped caring quite as much about the perceptions of, you know, oh, Rhonda's such a dreamer, and she can't do this, and she can't do that. Well, you know what? Heck, yeah, I can, because I envision it. I dream it. I I am, you know, a goal setter, and I'm a warrior woman, and I I, I care about living my life today. Mm. I really do. I really care about living my life today. I like that about the uh, the glasses analogy, because we if you were to go to an eye doctor, and then I were to go to an eye doctor, and if we both needed um, lenses, we'd get a different prescription, which is like yeah. a perception, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Totally it is. It's just the way somebody views their world. But it has right. nothing to do with your world. I mean, we all live in the same world. I don't want to sound fluffy. Yeah. But, uh, you know... Everybody comes to it with a, a different perspective based on their stories of their past. Right. I guess yeah. I'm thinking of this so much. It's like in that right now, if you and I were to swap glasses, like, here, you try mine, and I would try yours. I'd be looking, and I, would, I wouldn't say, oh, my, your glasses are wrong. I would say, wow, your glasses, <laughs> you have different eyes than I do. Look at that. Oh, is that how you see things? You know, that's a yeah. different exercise. <laughs> you should yeah, all exactly that. right. Oh, my goodness sake. It's so <laughs> cool. You know what, Lisa? It's funny that we're even talking about it this way, uh, which is pretty organic in itself. But the next book that I wrote through The Magnetic Entrepreneur was about vision. And you were in that as well, which is really exciting. But we talked about vision and my story. And that was about the lenses that my child wore, literally. He wore a particular pair of glasses. And, uh, you know, he didn't realize that there was a lens missing in his glasses until I said something to him. And ah, it's it's so cool. I love this concept. Again, another child. Like when we're children, we have we really are in our own world. Like it, like there's that word again, our own world. Maybe that's like it's it's so um, we have to come out of it, obviously, because we got to interact with people and stuff. I want to ask you about goal setting because uh, we brought that up, you know. And dr- dreams. Do you have a difference of um, definition between dreams and goals? Hmm. You know, I think goals. To say that we've got goals is almost more theoretical. You know, it's something Mm. that you write down on paper. That's the way I kind of envision Ah. it. So in order to see a dream to fruition, you may have to do some goal setting. You know, Mm. uh, say I wanted to go to Dominican on a holiday and, you know, how am I going to get there? Well, here are the goals to attain that dream. Um, You know, I think that that would be the definition. The dream is what I visualize in my soul. Oh, oh, I mean, goals are in the brain kind of thing. Like they get the ingredients. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's cool. You got good questions, girl. Uh, Hey, you are inspiring them. You know, know, and that's because that's what people are going to connect. Because, you know, we're all going to have like this. I have read story after story after book after book, and nobody has the same story. I mean, there's going to have some little threads that come through, and they really are just about how do we get past these challenges and how much. So right now, you've, you're on this beautiful part of your path. I mean, there's going to, there's challenges even in, right now. I'm sure I'm sure you had some this morning or yesterday or any of those things. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And we even had a goal, right? We wanted to become international bestseller. Then boom, we just did that on Saturday with that book, Magnetic Entrepreneur, the, um, Our Vision, Volume 1. Yes, Thank exactly. You. Yay, yay, yay. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. And so you could say like that was, you know, a goal, uh, sorry, a vision to see number one, but then the goals are okay. Well, this is what we got to do. And this is, you know, so yeah. Right in your 
but let's go and be a career because you are a life coach and well, you're more than a, like well, life in everything. There's things. Do you have some goals that you are are achieving right now in your career that you would love to share with people that, that it could help them? Oh, that could help them? Yeah, just inspire them to go, yeah, that's a good, I could do that goal too, because she's doing that goal. <laughs> you know what, Lisa, it has been quite an interesting couple of years. Literally, I was not dreaming prior to 2017. I was not I was not dreaming. I wasn't even in that headspace. I was working so hard and my husband has been so sick and you know, it was just go, 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 go. It wasn't until I had a concussion in 2017 that I woke up to life. Oh my gosh. Literally. And I've written a chapter in a different book about that. Literally, I had a concussion and that fall, that collapse, I was unconscious for 20 minutes. That concussion literally woke me up to life and I I started to dream again. And, you know, bigger things were going on in my life that I never had even dreamt of because I, I, found, I rediscovered who I was mm-hmm. and it was like, wow, this is the opportunity at hand. I mean, I I was able to acquire an all-expense-paid trip to Los Angeles, California, for example. And I I rode a Harley Davidson. I'm a motorcycle instructor as well at a a college in Ontario. And so riding motorcycles has been something that I have loved all of my life. That childlike spirit shines through in that. And uh, so I rode a motorcycle, a Harley Davidson, along the coast of California and in the mountains, and we got lost in the mountains. It was like a dream come true, but a dream that I had never had before. You know, oh, it was wow. honestly like I felt like I was at the top of the mountain without making the climb. Because, oh my God, you know what I mean? so cool. I love it, that. that. Yes, it, I can picture it. It's wild because it's giving me goosebumps as I talk, and it's a pretty hot day out here. Um, Yeah, it was almost effortless. And I don't want to say attaining your dreams are effortless because there are goals that you need to do to reach those heights. But it's almost like, you know, when you look down at the stairs and you've got, you're, you're running out of time and you left something, you left your purse upstairs or something, and you're looking down at, oh, my gosh, I've got to climb every single stair to get up there to get my purse so that I can get to work on time, just as an example. You're going to trip and stumble over every single stair, and you're going to fall, and it's going to hurt. When you set your mind to the height of your goal, your goal being that of the top of the stairs so that you can get your purse, mm-hmm. you're looking up. and with ease, you can do two stairs at a time, and you're up there quick. That is a freaking awesome analogy. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the way I've been feeling, Lisa. Like, that is literally oh. the way my life has been growing and expanding over the course of the past couple of years. And I love the little twist that you add there with doubling the stairs. Like, you're right. You just go, whoosh, because you're just focused. On the, oh, my God, that was so cool. I feel like I actually have to stand up. <laughs> and there's that, effort, there's that effort listening again, people. I know, I just, that's what I want everybody to feel. It's like if you thought about writing an entire book, you know, or like each chapter story, because, you know, but if you ended up like, look how many chapters you've written now, Rhonda, and how many yeah. you will write. I mean, you you can yeah. pluck all them and pull it together and have this big book. It's, it's the bigger vision. So the victory, and I know you love that word. Oh, the, thank you. The victory is just the victory of getting to the top of the mountain without even realizing you had to climb it. Yes, Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. It, you know what? That's where you become that warrior. You know that you conquered any obstacle to get to that place of victory. You're no longer the victim in the stories of your life. You are the victor of a collaboration of all of the events of your past. <sighs> And that's why the name Victory actually resonates with me, uh, which is going to be the next book that I help to do a collaborative in. Wow. And so for you, okay, that's a great thing there. 
when you do this collaborative, and we'll invite people to, again, connect with you, whether you want to be in possibly the word victory, and victor is resonate with you, and you're like, yes, I've done this, or um, maybe it's a victory that you see in your life that you would like to have, and maybe by writing the chapter might actually help yes. you get there. Ron, did you help them, like, um, and I, I'm just throwing this one at you as we close up here, but do you help them pull together a chapter or get the story out? You know, quite oftentimes, the story is in people anyways. It's just a matter of inspiring people to get out of their own head and allow the flow to occur. I mean, sure, I would love to chat with people about uh, getting that story out of themselves, but most often, it's there already. It's there already. It's just a matter of sitting down and doing it, finding that quiet space and allowing that beautiful flow to occur because everybody has it inside of them you know if they need a little encouragement absolutely my goodness Mm -hmm. for sure but everybody has their stories within them and they're worth hearing because you know the only way that we're going to make the world a better place is by helping each other learn and grow and Mm. uh we all have those stories to help each other learn and grow and nobody's story is better or bigger than anybody else's everybody's matters Everybody's mm-hmm. story matters. I love that. It's a big growth. You all grow just like flowers. So we've Rhonda yeah. Lauer, everyone, and we have so quite a few chapters you can read them. But right now we are talking about the magnetic entrepreneur. This is for women leadership, and it certainly helps men as well. And oh, see, I, Rhonda, I told you the time was going to fly. Didn't I say yeah. that? <laughs> you did. It was awesome. Oh my gosh. Thank you well, so, so I, much. I can't wait to have you guys back, like each and every one of you. But just everybody pick up the book, but reach out to Rhonda Lauer, um, L A U E R, because uh, on Facebook, because you, you just have it. She's just helpful in everything. She's a, a phenomenal coach, tremendous life experience, and can help you with your story as well. Oh, Thank Rhonda. you. And Lisa, if I could say to people, it's Rhonda without an H. It's R O N D A. Lauer, L-A-U-E-R, and just message me and say that you heard me on this radio station so that I don't feel shy about uh, adding you to my collective tribe of wonderfulness. That's perfect. Exactly. I like that. Don't feel shy. You're so wonderful. Well, thank you, Rhonda. Hang with us, everybody. We're coming back with another fabulous co-author. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on The Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Obstacles equal opportunities. Are you living without success in your life? Are there obstacles that you need to overcome to create that success? Challenging circumstances, feeling vulnerable, afraid to be authentic, lacking or even feeling like you've lost your personal power. Light on Living has just the interview series to help you ignite your confidence and your personal drive to overcome whatever challenges you face. Join us every Monday in July to learn how these entrepreneurs overcame damaging business experiences, financial ruin, and personal hardships as they show you how to move forward with poise, grace, and insight. So get your copy of Obstacles Equal Opportunities Volume 2, The Enlightened Journey, and join us as we go live with these empowered authors. It's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance. Say hi, guys. When I adopted them, I discovered that they both have incredible personalities. Chance's sole purpose in life is to love and to be loved. 
Frankie is a little bit of a scoundrel and always entertaining. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fund. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry, and we are coming back in with our second author of the of this today's show. Uh, this is uh, Magnetic Entrepreneur Women Leadership, and we have Holly Ann Klein with us today. And her her name just sounds like an author, to be honest with you. <laughs> Hello, Holly. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm so good. I'm so good. Uh, you know, we just wrapped up with Rhonda and you, both of your stories. I have to mention it was really interesting as I read them. I did, you know, I never pair anybody. We just, you know, end up with who we end up back to back. And you both have horses in your stories. Oh, that's so beautiful. I know. That's and my so sister's so actually going, not this weekend, but the next. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, one weekend went to horse therapy. So I just, I love that really, you you wrote so beautifully and you shared this. You ever got to pick up the book. I won't ruin the story there for you. But <laughs> um, before we jump in, Holly, just let me read um, a little bit about your bio here and we'll just jump into some inspiring shares, okay? Okay. Okay. Well, everyone, Holly Ann, with no E, Holly Ann Klein, since her accident, she has achieved partial recovery from injuries. Now, she talks about the injury, the accident in the chapter, so we won't jump in there, but she's also gained sole custody of her eldest grandson, Gordon, and has written two books, I Am Not Who They Say I Am, and Seven Times Saved. Her books inspire others to remain strong in times of adversity, be courageous, build their own inner strength, personal wisdom, be grateful, and appreciate all that life has to offer. She has recently released her own signature program, Teaching Others to Find Their Own Moral Code. That's a big one. We're going to talk about that one. Their own standards, values, and how to implement strategies to help others remove the impact of negative words. Removing the negativity in their lives has helped her clients reach and obtain their own dreams. So, Holly, you are, well, thank you for helping the world, first of all. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, that's my pleasure. I got to jump into this right away. Moral code. So, I know from reading just a little bit bit about you, I don't even know how you were able, how are we able to develop our morals when it seems that we witness things around us that kind of like just show us that they get hurt all the time? Well, for myself, uh, I've developed my own moral code when I was eight years old, okay. and what I did was I basically took a look at the people that uh, who were around me, and I asked myself, who do I want to be when I grow up? Mm-hmm. And I realized that the people that were the closest to me in my family were not the people that I wanted to mim- mimic. Mm-hmm. And I realized that I had to look without with outside in the community and who was it that I wanted to become like and when I found that person I realized uh, it was a police officer and my family were very notorious Um, they were involved in some of the biggest gangs there is in Canada and uh, I realized that who who they were who my family were and who their gang were was not it didn't mirror who I was inside mm-hmm. and I realized by looking inside of who you know what what like sometimes you have a checklist of the things you like and the things you don't like mm-hmm. it, it, as simple as uh, eating a, a meal okay well I don't like that item but I like that one and yeah. so when I did that I realized that the moral code is basically taking a look of what's inside you and what do you like and what do you not like and and when i realized that that actually helped me uh create my moral code and that's one of the things i teach others to expand on in their life not just the food but also who they want to be and um therefore they're able to uh arrange in their life what they want to accomplish 
That is, and, and thank you for doing that for so many people. Uh, you used a great um, example there. I want to dive into it because you literally were bo- born into, like your, it was your family, it was people around you. You were born into a life, like you said, for a notorious and, and gang. I mean, you were handed this identity, you know, and this is what other, they said, this is what other people are going to think about you. This is what I think about you. So you have to think about this. And it felt wrong to you. It didn't feel good. That that's a big thing to be able to hear hear that. So when you titled it I am not who they say I am, um, you were so young to how what got you to open up to hear your own voice versus believing what they what everybody else was handing to you? Well, originally it started when I was about uh two years old when I was sitting on my baby blanket and I realized that what the partying that my mother was doing and how the men were approaching her and doing things for with her in public in our backyard didn't it felt ucky to me mm. and so I know that's not um I realized it didn't feel genuine of who I was and so uh. It was like, okay, something's not quite clicking here and something's not quite making sense, but I'm going to go with it and observe Mm. what it is in her life and in their life that doesn't quite resonate. And so by the time I reached eight years old, it started to make more sense that I was, I am not who they wanted me to become, but I needed to become who I wanted to become. And that Mm. time in myself, had a choice and that everyone has a choice to make who is it that they want to become who is it that they resonate with or who is it that that um what meal do they want to eat versus what somebody else is telling them to eat Mm -hmm. and use that really good word choice i mean we always think oh you know we're flicking through television right or tv and trying to go okay what are all my choices in movies we have so many or like you said choosing from a menu there's so many choices but it goes way deeper which is really you know i think you need to be reminded that we have that power sometimes um there's uh we you and i chatted before and you do seem to attract or or, and seem to work with a lot of people who have uh, ptsd so post-traumatic stress disorder is this because you yourself um have it or had it experienced it or is it just something that you're able to help others with yeah when when i was um when i as i got older from the farm uh i joined the cadets at 12 years old and i was with the cadets for about four and a half years and then i joined the militia and i realized though my family was notorious i i wanted to be in the military i wanted to be a, a military police officer and i uh I joined and I became a military police officer, although I wasn't fully ordained. I I was more like uh, doing that job in that position, but I didn't have all the badges and I didn't have all the education yet. I was on that You're working on it. Of, of working on that. And and so uh, when I went away with the military, I was uh, I was shot at in in on hiring range, and I ended up um, I ended up getting. 20 live rounds pointed at me by accident by the guy who was standing beside me on the firing range and later on I was diagnosed with PTSD. So uh, that's one of my, um, I have seven seven times saved. Seven times saved is, it's not, uh, it's not so much uh, spiritual in in religion aspect, it's seven times saved uh, is more, these are my seven incidences that have occurred in my life. Um, three times I flatlined. And, oh, my uh, gosh. Yeah, I, I came off a hill. Of, it was really strange. My my first husband and I had a heart. Uh, we were financially strapped. And uh, we came, we finally got the money to go on our honeymoon. And when we were coming back from our honeymoon, our car rolled over the back end, rolled over the front, and then we rolled two and a half times and ended up upside down in the ditch. Oh, my we, gosh. We ended up getting into the ambulance when I arrived, and I flatlined in the ambulance. I was revived back. Oh. And then later on in my book, it talks about falling six and a half stories in the elevator and how I went to work. 
and uh, became paralyzed and it took me nine and a half years to learn how to walk again. So all these incidences being shot at and rolling a car and elevator accident, it all like it all mounts back to what my childhood was. It's okay, all these things have happened to me, but that's okay because I know who I am inside. And because of who I am inside and know who I am inside, it allowed me to overcome and, and, and keep pushing towards my goals and my dreams. And that's what I try to, I, I have succeeded in helping other people do, is finding who they are inside so that they can live their goals and their dreams. I find it fast. I'm just like, I'm, you know, I'm in my maze and like, oh my gosh, this is a crazy stuff that's like happened. But it's also helping. It almost, it, it paints a picture for me to think, wow, when you really are anchored and you know, it's like, oh, hopefully we're not attracting all these things just to prove it. Like, we don't need all that extra proof anymore. <laughs> no more, no more eight for you. But, well, you know what? You, and it wouldn't matter because you will still be you. And also, wow, your body is really, really uh, like, healing it can it, it's healed through all these because i i see you scooching around you're walking you're moving do you do you feel good oh i feel great yeah <laughs> i feel great inside and out because it's it's all within the code it's all within it starts at the the twinkle of who you are inside and everything that comes your way it, it's kind of like have you ever seen that commercial with the band walking down the street and you've got all these things happening to them and it just keeps walking Oh, right. Like he's in his own. What yeah. these other people to do to keep walking. My program is called Keep Moving Forward. Oh, I love that. Oh, goodness. That is, you're just, yeah, you just keep moving forward. Um, oh, I wrote something down when I, that you just made me remember something you wrote and I love, love, love about. Uh, it's not who's beside you, but how far you go. Is that? Yes. Did I get it? Okay, good, because I'm like, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> Can I work? <laughs> so, and I imagine that at first I was kind of like, oh, my gosh, it's like when you start a race. You know, you're down, and you're getting ready, and you're, and you don't, to your left, there's people, to the right, there's people. But it, it isn't about that, is it? Like, at all. It's, no. No, like, they're there. Um, it's who you bring into your realm, but it's up to you. I mean, I was born into this fa- very notorious family, but they were to my left, and they were to my right, and they were all around me. But it was who I was inside that allowed me to say, hey, these aren't my people. They're my family, but they're not my people. My mm. people are people who want things in their life, who know that even though all these things can happen to them, they know without a doubt that they're meant for more. Okay, so that was very powerful. I could feel your heart opening right there and softening and others, you know, that's, they're going to do that. What if right now somebody's listening and they feel trapped, like they feel like that, but they're aware that it's, it's not for them. How do they safely go about, what is their first seed start? Like how do they, how do they start creating the life that they do want? So what they do is they look within themselves and just kind of like what I did because I was two years old and my my mother locked me in my room from two to 12 years old. Uh, And uh, my, with my twin sister, we weren't, we were locked in our room for 10 years and we couldn't even talk to each other. We weren't allowed to talk to each other and we weren't allowed to put our foot on the floor or my mother would come back in. So what I did, I just turned my toe and I, and I looked inside who I was, and I just said, okay, I know I'm meant for more, so how do I get help? And eventually, yeah. it was it was the little things that made me feel good. It was the music that played when I heard music playing. It was like, okay, this resonates with me. I understand that by it resonating with me, I'm not alone. I know that I'm not alone. Somebody greater is, is, is communicating with uh which was trying to blossom me or whatever. And it's the teacher. Uh-huh. I had a, a teacher named Miss Salute in, in, before I was 12 years old. And she said, you know what? Maybe you should join the military. It's, it's a really good thing. And, I, well, I thought, well, what a name for a teacher who's telling you to join the military. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, okay, so these are the little things that if they feel alone, and, and they open up and say, okay, yeah, those those little things are trying to tell me 
it's okay I can walk this path and they can also if they really like they can contact me I have um, social media and I'm I'm here to help them but okay. I also want them to know that they're never alone in regards to the walk the walk you can do it did you ever fear um Um, at, at which point? Well, yeah, I guess that's all. I, right now I'm thinking, my gosh, if I couldn't put my feet on the ground, I would be like, that's pretty much hell. But, um, oh gosh, I guess, I guess in each one, uh, how did you, did you ever think, nope, this is, this is a big one. This is there. It can't be worse than this. I, I should, should stay here. I should give up. This is where I should ever be. No, no. Well, maybe a, a little bit, but then I thought. Uh, like this was when I was two or three, and I thought, like, why was I put into this situation? What is it about me that brings this essence of this into my life? Mm. And then I thought, you know what? It's like that race. It's not about what's left or right. It's what's in me. So, like, that's mm. what I thought. I'm just going to go with it. So it's a lot of self-exploring. Like, it's a lot of Whenever you were uncomfortable, because you, I love that word, by the way, you used the word genuine and not authentic, and I thought that was so unique. Um, I really wanted to highlight that. <laughs> so when you when said, I, I felt this feeling, and it just, it didn't feel genuine, it didn't feel mine, um, that's, so if we can even get there, right, and then we start asking those questions, like, why am I put here, what's going on, what am I feeling, who can, how can I get help, right, is that, yes. Those are the steps. When is it when you say I'm um, keep moving forward, that's the name of your program? Yes. How do you work that program? How does that do people join it or is it a coaching program or online? It's a coaching program. Okay. And um I'm a life coach now. Yay! I'm a qualified life coach. And so I, I walk people through uh removing the onions, so to speak, of t- taking those peels and, and t- take them off and find out who you are inside and really uh, resonate with uh, the core of you so that you can build stronger, uh, wiser, and also um, be able to move forward. So once you uh, remove all the peeling, uh, it's it's you, it's it's what's in you, it's who you are, and that strength alone will, uh, with my program, will help you get to where you you want to go with your your goals, your dreams, your desires, all that will be accomplished. Through like I've walked the walk myself. I've walked the walk of I've had this childhood from notorious, and I've had seven times saved, and yeah, that's what I do. You know, I I love it. I just made me think of something. Um, you know, when you said goals and dreams and desires, like, and sometimes when people are so unhappy where they are. Everybody listening, if if you are unhappy where you are and you don't even have dreams, guess what? Your dream just may be just to not be there. Your dream may just be not to be in negativity and and feeling traumatized or everything. Are you have you turned right around one eighty from the feeling traumatized or do you do you still work have to work on things? Uh, I I still have to work on some things, but um my icon is the butterfly. And no. if you ever um, think of the butterfly, you're in a cocoon, such as when I was in my room for 12, uh, 10 years. And you're in that cocoon and you're you're building all the stuff within yourself, who you are. And as you come out, you become this beautiful butterfly. You become who you were meant to be. And that's what I do. I help people become the, the butterfly. Mm-hmm. And it does take some time. I mean, and as somebody pointed out, I remember a meme on Facebook, how they said, have you ever seen the butterfly come out? It's not pretty. It's full of goop and goo, and they have to get through, like, all this sticky stuff. Right now. Exactly, <laughs> yes. And uh, I, um, I, I have had um, counselors and, and people like that to help me. There's been people who I've gone to for help, but I find that, um, yeah, being a life coach is really wonderful because I've I have come I've had people come to me who have gone to counselors, but um, some people, oh, a lot of people, have not walked the walk that I've walked, and so they don't know the nitty gritty of how to get there other than the book smart. Yeah, and as and do you go? Do you 
are, do you do any speaking at um, at military places? Or I, I don't know if they offer things like that, like or just people who've been in the military. Like, is that something that you're calling to go and, and speak to? I was in Toronto this past uh, June first. Uh, yeah, June. Yes, I do. Okay, yeah. So, what would we? What? How, where? Where's the best place that you like? What's the dream of yours that you're on? You just know it's in you. That butterfly is getting ready to go to. And what would you love to see? Because we all want to support that dream for you too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's sweet of you. <laughs> um, I want. I really, really want to help. My, if I was looking in some my core, it's just to really help other people reach their dreams. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, doing it by word of mouth, uh, by professional speaking, my books, and just talking with people and helping them find their butterflies, their true meaning of who they are. You, you you mentioned books. I'm so glad you said that because you have a chapter in this book, but you also have like the solo books. Is that was that a really different experience for you? The uh, the co-author or the my book. Oh, well, yeah, because you, you have your solo books. So that's you just writing the whole thing. And um, I just wondered, yeah. how, when you when you write just a chapter, um, is there still a healing process? Like, because a lot oh, of people yeah. are listening and thinking, gosh, do I want to write a book or do I want to write a chapter? And, and what could you help and, and guide them to how that helps to the writing process? Well, writing my own book was really, really helpful in, uh, in healing myself through the whole thing and under, understanding where – I can help others, but um, writing with other people really built my network, and I've met some really wonderful people through co-authoring with Robert J. Moore and uh, Yay, Robert. Travis Brown and uh, Unstoppable Tracy. Oh, my God. They're wonderful people, and it was an honor to meet all of them, so although uh, writing my book own book was very therapeutic uh -huh. uh, writing with other people was very motivating and inspiring so that is the neat way of saying that you know what writing your own book is therapeutic and healing and then the having a team around you is is that support network and also inspiring because you get to meet some incredible people yes so, and th I thank you. Both. <laughs> and yes, and thank you for saying, Robert. We want to give a little shout out to you, Robert J. Moore. He is just holding such space. He's created such a platform for all of us to come together. And I get to meet you. I would never have met you without Robert. Well, I probably would, have, but you know, you know what I mean. Like it just helps pull it together. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I have met some really wonderful people, and uh, I just want to uh, shout out uh, to all those people who are listening. And thank you for for listening. Uh, Lisa, you're a wonderful person. I know some people oh. that, uh, like Jane and Steve Wool, uh, who are also my speaking coaches, and oh. they wanted to say hi to you. Oh, hi! <laughs> <laughs> and Robert K. Moore, and uh, there are some really wonderful people out there, and I just, uh, people that know me know that uh, I come with my heart, and I really okay. want to help people. Um, you you really do, and I want to highlight that people with um PTSD, if they're struggling, if um that's you, you do want to reach out to to Holly. And and what's next for you, Holly? Are you going to write another chapter and share it with us, or another book? Um, my daughter Stephanie had uh, Stephanie Richter. Uh, she's my PR, and she's oh. looking at writing a chapter in Robert's book. So uh, I think oh. the next step for me is helping my daughter write her chapter. So you oh, I love that, like a coach. See, you just are stepping into the role naturally. And and I want to just share it with everybody listening, too. This is why, Holly, you, I would love people to reach and connect with you because when when we can hear our own voice, that's that's how we make a really good coach because we are, we're not pushing, you're not pushing your views or anything like that on them, but you're just, you're, you can recognize in another if they are being that genuine, authentic, if, you know, or if they're letting somebody else tell them who they should be. You're really good at identifying that, I think. Thank you. I appreciate that.
Oh, you're welcome. So everybody, I want to just send that little, little like, everybody, got to pick up the, uh, any Magnetic Entrepreneur book is going to work, but the Women Leadership is where you're going to find Holly and Klein, and Klein is with a K, uh, and just to reach out and just check her out, because you know what, I know you're you're open and just want to chat with people and hear what, what they're going through, but you, you really would like to do that, co- um, be their coach, and also just do the Keep Moving Forward coaching program, so if everybody can, how do they ask about that? Do they just give you a little message and say, I'd like to know about it? Yes, they can contact my daughter, Stephanie Hennessy. She's on my Facebook page. She runs okay. my social media, and she's doing very, very well. I just wanted to put out a blast to her. Aww. Thank you so much. Yay, my what a pretty name. daughter. <laughs> I love that name. Well, it's just been a pleasure having you and all the co-authors. You guys are a fantastic group of, of women leaders, you know, perfect leadership. So thank you for all of this and your time today. And thank you for your time. No, oh, I really appreciate being on your show today. I, I really. Um... It's fun. Everything is fun. It's like a little playtime. I love this. So everybody, Magnetic Entrepreneur Robert J. Moore has put out a series that is incredible. This has been the Women Leadership. We're going to come back next Tuesday with two more. And I, yes, it's a little surprise guest at the moment. But um, just everybody have the most fabulous week. And remember, listen to your inner voice. Don't let other people tell you who you are. You be who you are. Holly will help you out if you can't figure that out right now okay <laughs> oh you guys thanks so much holly thank you everybody thanks for okay, bye. Okay, bye bye